Welcome back to um, Down the Rabbit Hole with Chibi and the rest of us. You can't tell who's talking right now, but it's okay. It's me, Undercover Zoidberg. Um, um, today we'll be talking about a show that is dear to my heart. And the show is Dan to Dan. Well, at least that intro is as awkward as the show at times. I think I'm wearing this thing. <laughs> so, Brad, you chose this one. It's currently out on Netflix, Crunchyroll. Five episodes. Uh, I think a new episode each Thursday. I think the first season is going to be 12 episodes. I'm assuming that there's going to be a second um, Cower in the Works next year, or 2025. So, we'll see how that goes. But Brad, because you chose this randomly on Netflix, what'd you think? Uh, I, I really enjoyed it. It was absurd and just, irrele- it, it, you know, it's like the uncle from another world, right? It's just, it starts out wacky. It gets wackier. And, you know, they mentioned dongs a lot. So it's a rom-com. I know, uh, <laughs> I know it's Jack's favorite. So no, so- it, it literally is a rom-com. Yeah. That's how they wrote it. Really? Yeah. It's a sh- I mean, it is a love story. I guess it makes sense, yeah. Jack, what'd you think? I was I was kind of curious to get your opinion on this because I know that uh, that first episode... Yeah, that lot. very first episode threw me off. <laughs> I wasn't sure what the fuck I was watching for for a moment. Um, You know, Turbo Granny is, is, is a... definitely an interesting character. Um, But I, I, like, I like the whole... Uh, I like the storyline between um, Ken and wh- wh- what she call him, Okarun. Yeah, Okarun and Momo. Okarun and Momo. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, I liked how by episode five they became somewhat of friends, we, and we don't know where that's going to go yet. But I do. I, I guess I guess I can appreciate the uh, the uh, this anime a bit. It's not my cup of tea, uh, but I, I don't dislike it. Oh. Okay, I'll take that. I thought Jack was going to be like, y'all are wild. Chibi, no, you- I, I'm kind of yeah. like, I, I like, I like <laughs> weird off the wall shit because it's different, you know? It's, it's not your typical, there's it's a, not your typical anime. There's an anime called Fooly Cooly. Um, literally, the initials are FLCL. And back, I think it was like Adult Swim years ago. There's only like five episodes, and it was a very absurd anime. And um, I got a lot of vibes from like Dan did in when I first like picked picked it up as a manga. And I was like, this is a lot like Fooly Cooly. Like it's just like off the wall. Um, but there is good balance there in terms of like the action. Like if you ever pick up the manga, you can look up like some of the art in there. It's some of the best art I've seen really? in a manga. Oh, it's, oh shit, really? Yeah, you know, it's phenomenal. Like that, the guy they do weekly. Um, I think the artist does uh, weekly releases for the anime or the manga, and some of the art is like insanely detailed. When it like has the the double spreads of what's going on in terms of action stuff like that, like it gets really crazy. It's one of the reasons why it's one of the biggest or the um, the new gen for shonen, and people were really excited about it because the manga like got picked up really fast in terms of like uh, popularity. And so with, with Jujutsu Kaisen ending, it's like Dan Dan Sakamoto days. I think Blue Lock, I guess, if you want to. Yeah. yeah. But Blue Lock's animation for season two is dog shit. It's li- That's what I heard. It's literally like um a PowerPoint. Oof. It's pretty bad. Are you oh, serious? No. Oh, it looks, it's, no. really, it's really bad. You can you can like uh, go on TikTok and look up like Blue Lock clips animation. And it looks like they're just like shifting the hand up, like like waving like that, you know, but it, like does it like quickly. It's, it's so bad. Um. I think right. they. I think in one of the. Uh, and apparently, what happened, just as a side, is that um, the first five episodes were animated by one guy. That's why the quality is so bad. So mm. like, as he's kicking a soccer ball, it looks like the the JPEG of the soccer ball or the PNG <laughs> as it's going over to the other person. I feel like I, I need to look this up real quick. Oh, it's, like, I'm it's, so curious. It's so bad. It was really funny because like the first season was not bad animation, right? It was solid. Yeah. People were. You know, they, they have high expectations of a lot of things. But um that second season, good lord. 
I, I had doubts about the studio. I think they're called Science for this. I was like, I don't know how they're going to be able to adapt some of the the bigger panels. But when they do their like, it's like the uh, the tunnel scene with Turbo Granny, right? With their when their both heads showed up and stuff like that. That is a super detailed scene. I was I'm a fan of that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's very cool. Oh, Chief. this is bad. Oh, Chief. Chief is looking up <gasps> the, the blue lock uh, oh. animation. Yeah, you can all take a look at it. It's really quick. It's just, it's not good, guys. It's it's really bad. <laughs> Someone said, considering it was a single person, he did pretty good. He did pretty good for a fucking PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, but like, holy hell, like when you do compare it to like the first season, it's it's so evident. Chibi, what'd you think of the, the first couple episodes of Dandadan? I really liked it. I definitely questioned the whole wiener thing. I, I think that was an interesting choice, but like Need that I love <laughs> the banana. Um, I love quirky stuff like that. I really enjoy the characters. I'm a big like I I love the conspiracy theory of like alien aliens and ghosts. I think that's such a funny like narrative to be like, oh, I and I've always had this conversation with people, like, you know, would you think what is more plausible, like aliens or ghosts? And I feel like that's kind of like this this argument. And I think it's funny that they both were proven like wrong by the other in like the worst way possible. Have you watched the dub or the sub? What'd you do? I watched the sub. Oh, okay. I still need to go back and watch the dub just to see. The dub like, is the dub is really good. I like know, this. and that's what you told me last time. I didn't have time this week to watch it, like rewatch it. Um, but I was like, "Fuck, I I need to try it," just because you said it was a lot funnier actually in dub. Especially because I feel like they're um, Brad. What was that one anime? Was it uh, the uh, was it Ghost Stories, where it feels like they like ad lib the entire anime? What they had to, they had to because yeah, I think they lost <laughs> the contract. So they were like, fuck it. They're like, fuck it. We're ad libbing. We're going to say whatever we want. That's essentially what that feels like sometimes. Like when they start rifting off one another, it's very natural in Mm -hmm. the, um, like the banter. Yeah. In the dub, which is, uh, you know, probably one of the bigger concerns with like, I think it was like free, uh, free written when they talked about the dub and the sub. And I think Japanese, like people, like they were like, yeah, I really like the, the dub more than like the sub. Cause you can, can, it sounds like they're actually conveying their emotions a little better interesting and they do I that, didn't in, know that and they do that in dan and too which is you know funny because every character is like so far it's like i mean you have you have ghosts you have a granny who looks like she's fucking in her 20s oh you know God, what i mean fine yeah, yeah that's that's what, cosplay incoming i wasn't yeah. lying i said granny seiko was her bro yeah. i was not <laughs> yeah. i was not joking i was like this yeah, one, i was like not. the moment they show this woman on screen people are gonna be fucking just yep. tripping all over themselves and uh yeah i well i mean like the the one thing i really like is that they they go from like really funny, absurd moments to like really serious moments too. There's really good tonal control in the way they convey action to the way they get to drama, which mm-hmm. I think is like really hard to balance in today's anime because it's either like you're too serious and melodramatic and then you try to be funny and it doesn't work. But like this one's like, it's always absurd. Like the dude's mm-hmm. looking for his balls, guys. Like what the... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when she's like, like, I need to talk to you right now. now. What, when she's like, when when uh, when they're eating crab and stuff like that, and he was like, mm-hmm. just like, let me see your pecker. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you got that thing back? <laughs> <laughs> That's what, and like, and it honestly, like the conversations feel natural, right? Mm-hmm. When like, they were like questioning, like how they wanted to see each other again. Like this goodbye, goodbye, that type of mm-hmm. stuff. It's very, you know, very well done. It's very funny. Um, all right, so everyone watched the f- the first five episodes. Mm-hmm. Did you guys guess about who the cat was? Did you guys watch the credits? Anybody? Like the the ending? Oh, music? Y- ish. Yeah. Did you guys guess who the cat was? Like in the ending credit? Yeah, it was Turbo Granny. Like I was I was wondering if like people caught on because it was like, oh uh, yeah, yeah. I thought that one was kind of obvious, but I read on Reddit people were like, I would have never guessed that. I was like, really? I was like, I'm pretty sure like that's the last character they interacted with. It would have been very weird to have like the the Turbo Granny be anything else other than that cat. I just love the fact that like it's that that cat Turbo Granny talks so much shit, and it's like the funniest thing knowing how small she is. <laughs> just the biggest shit talker. I fucking love that. I feel like that's always how it is. It's like the tiniest one is the biggest shit talker. Don't look at me, thank you. When they're like, "Where's?" He's like, he's like, "Give my balls back." He's like, "Yeah, about that. I lost those." <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, oh my Can we god. Talk a- can we talk about how it has the greatest opening in a hot minute though? Dandadan? I I, I actually I think I like the ending now more. 
Really? Now that I've like watched the episodes, I rewatched it again. I was like, damn, the ending is really fucking good. Like the opening like slaps to the ending and then it just like mm-hmm. smooths out. I need to give it another shot because I, I usually just kind of like click next without really like <laughs> listening. So I need to give it a shot. Damn, Brad, you good? I heard some heavy breathing over there. He's it's probably very uncomfortable actually, under that mask. <laughs> it is it is quite warm. Um, <laughs> I actually I actually really do like the intro. Um the ending. Um, yes, I mean it's a to me, I like I, I really but, like the ending. Yeah. yeah, the intro is dope, man. Yeah. Uh, it's very catchy, and then it has that point where it just kind of like riffs and goes to that high point. And you're just like, Jesus, <laughs> who comes up with that stuff? I can't remember. Well, did, they did the one for um, Marshall season two. It was really good. That's right. And they yeah, had that, that shit was amazing. They yeah, had, I loved that the, one too. They had the little dance and stuff like that that people were obsessed with. Yeah, it was very. The bling, bong, bling, 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 bling. It's so catchy. Oh yeah, the whole like I I I I'm kind of shocked that uh Dan to Dan has caught on too because I remember like reading the first few chapters and I was like this is fucking awkward dude and like it's it's very lewd right like when you don't know how to feel and then it's like just completely goes into like this crazy ass action and they do a really good job of like with their hand animation CGI mix too which is fucking great like the whole entire crab scene was amazing I thought that was so cool looking. But uh, yeah, I was like, I, I was reading the reactions online and people were like, what the fuck am I watching here? Like, what is this? <laughs> what is this first episode? Same thing that Jack said. Like, what is this first episode? Like, what is what is happening right now? And I'm like, Dan did bro. Like, it's, I don't it's, know. The un- it's the unlikely friendship of someone who believes in ghosts and someone who believes in aliens. Exactly. That un- that unlikely romance that you can see happening, right? The Ken Takakura. That's like my favorite part because that I that should have me so dead. Stop. I was going to say that's my favorite part. I totally forgot that like Momo, she's a she's a Gyaru. I didn't. I totally forgot that she was the entire. I was like, man, she because she has like that real weird style to her. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And, and like the way she talks. But like, I love the fact the, the one thing I do love about this show that I think that is is a really good detail is that they're not wearing the same fucking clothes all the time. Yeah, that shit. I swear, every time I watch an anime or or read a manga, I'm like, dude, you, can you wear that for <laughs> like your clothes? Yeah, you're wearing that for six <laughs> straight months. Like, what do we do? <laughs> and then in fucking talking about your closet, like no, and that is like the one thing that people have talked about. Like, if you look at some of the the volume covers for Dandadan, like they're fucking stylish as shit. It is amazing. Mm-hmm. I just love the fact that like Okroon's hair like constantly goes through like he had the bowl cut, <laughs> then he had the perm. Oh yeah, <laughs> then his hair is fucking like. Yeah. That, right? <laughs> very it's very all of it's very well done very well represented mm-hmm. um I'm trying to think uh does anyone have like a favorite moment so far in any of the episodes we'll start with the guy that didn't like it jack what do you think <laughs> i just said i didn't like it why did jack not like it brad what's what's going on with this fucking guy dude i don't understand him oh it's a good show i don't <laughs> dislike it it's not my favorite um let's see how dare he disrespect brad like that brad you, are oh, no, you... i kind of like the moment where Momo was kind of getting her ass whooped into the uh, wall. Oh, and she... Uh, and then she reveals, she's like, now I'm behind the gate, and I have room. Uh, that that was pretty fun to watch. They do that shit a lot in the upcoming action stuff. Like, they're very creative with the way like they approach fighting different aliens and spirits and stuff like that. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. I also like the fact that Granny Seiko, she, like, straight up doesn't believe in ghosts and stuff. <laughs> oh, no, aliens? She's like, aliens aren't real. Like, what are you talking about? She's like, I have psychic powers. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> She's like, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. That tracks. I'm like, oh, you believe that? <laughs> Brad, what about you? What was your favorite um, part oh, so far? Um, Dude, do you want to take off fi- the mask? Like, because it the looks... First, the, the first five episodes. It's it's really just the... It's this. This part is the... Oh, God. I know, right? I'm bald. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> the first five episodes, pretty much, uh, were my favorite part. Um it it does like it I, I will say that it does start off very abruptly mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like it gets it gets very awkward very quickly but i uh, i feel like it fixes itself i will say there's there is kind of a logic break um when she's in the ready. uf when she's in the ufo and her cell phone works how does that how is that a thing like i i'm assuming she would not get reception in the sky in a UFO. I mean, I to said, answer a phone call. Listen, we got to be able to get fucking Okaroon <laughs> up there somehow in, in like the, yep. the the fucking Turbo Granny form. Otherwise, otherwise the plot does not happen. You don't get to true. see the That's banana. True. Banana. Shibi, what about uh, you? Oh, 
Damn, break no, that he's, yeah, no, no, that was that was that was it. Shibi, what do you got? Sorry. Um, for me, it was like bits and pieces. Like, I, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like Brad where I'm just like, I, I like every single episode. Um, I, I think the highlights for me that were really funny was I love when she found out his name was Ken, whatever. Taka, Ken, Takamura. Ken Takakura. Takakura. I thought that shit was so funny to me. She was like, no. It was like the it was like the big romantic <laughs> explosion, though. It's like the moment she realized like he was he was the one that was. <laughs> I like they they were giving yep. their her, her friends were giving her shit in class like there's no mm-hmm. such thing as like a strong silent type like you're not going to meet that person and they're like what's your name mm-hmm. Ken Takakura it's like god no it's not that shit was, <laughs> yeah she was like no it's not it is she not. was so funny to me I just thought it was so ironic like I, I was like one of those things I should have saw coming but when it happened I was like oh this is so great um I really like too in the first episode where like they're at their respective places like exploring mm-hmm. and then that whole sequence of like him running through the tunnel, her getting abducted. I thought like that was cool. Very well done. Um, mm-hmm, I liked that a lot. And then um, in the second se- second episode too, and into the third, I really liked the the fight scene that they had. That kind of Jack was saying, like I didn't know how that would play out because I felt like she she was not necessarily weak, but it, it was cool to see her kind of like outwit them, if that makes sense, or outwit him, whatever. A lot of times when I was when I'm going through the manga, it really feels like I'm reading a comic. Mm -hmm. Just the way like everything kind of (laughs) scales in that like it goes it goes off the fucking walls like and I'm I think I know where it's going to end. Like the 12th Mm -hmm. episode, I think I know what arc is going to be on, but I'm kind of shocked that um, it's been animated so well. I think my favorite. I was going to go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no, you're good. Yeah, I I was going to say, I think my favorite part so far was when um. I think it's like episode three when they introduced Granny Seiko and like mm-hmm. she's like the psychic talking to that one guy. She's like, You're 24. He's like, I'm I'm 18. <laughs> no. He's like, you're, he's like, You're married. He's like, You're married with a child. And he's like, No. He's like, Your favorite food is was it ramen? I think it was, right? She's like, No. Yeah. And then flash forward to like the like near the end yeah, of the episode. Yeah, when they had the news. And then like he, <laughs> it turns out that this idol is not only he's married. Oh no, they had a child out of wedlock. They're not married. Like he has, he has a child. He's twenty four years old. That like they have everyone like apologizing for him. <laughs> that is a real thing, by the way. If you do like um, oh shit, really? It, yeah, no. In Japanese media and stuff like that, like if if you fuck up, like you will see like people on stage doing like public apologies, bowing and stuff like that. Oh. Making, yeah, very weird. The first time I saw it, I was like, "What are they doing?" <laughs> that was like a, like a comedic thing. Like, no, this is this person's seriously yeah. apologizing for what he did. And um, yeah. good. She's like sitting there laughing. She's like, ah, she's like, hold on. I thought you said he was uh, like, what about the ramen thing? I was right about that too. I was yeah. like, <laughs> it was and, curry, not ramen. Oh, the curry. Yeah. And then she flicks her next chance. She's like, ah. <laughs> I'm, like, <"What?" laughs> I'm like, that. that's where you can kind of tell she's old, right? With the way she mm-hmm. acts right there. But beyond that, it's like, I just remember watching. Yeah. yeah, it was episode five when she is running after Turbo Granny in the cat form. And they have her swing down with the um with the fan. And I remember someone on Twitter was like, Look at all that movement back there. Like, what's going Oh my god. <laughs> what's what's going on with that? And I was like, dude, that's just you know. I'm like, well, at least you know Momo has good genes, right? Like she's when she's eighty, she's gonna look like that. And Okrun, you she's know. gonna be looking good. Yeah, she'll be looking fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was gonna ask you oh, sorry. No, I'm sorry, no, I didn't no, mean to cut you off again. No good. I was gonna ask you, like, how do you think the pacing is? Like, is it like are they going fast? Are they going pretty like on par? Like, what do you, it's, what do you no, think? No, it's to... it's exactly on par. It's it's Damn, pretty much okay. like they basically the way it works is they hit an arc, they do like a big action scene, they do like a lot of dramatic reveals and stuff like that. A lot of cool shit's happening, they grow in their powers, and then it has like a nice little cool down. It goes into like a slice of life mode, which is fantastic. Like when you see them back at the school and they're trying to look for each other and then they see Ira, so that's the girl with the pink hair, who like is trying to fuck with the Okarun, and then she like uses her psychic power to drop the uh <laughs> I thought that was the funniest shit. They're like, Oh my god, where did that come from? And he's like, Oh my god, she fell over after talking to me. Is it my residual effect? <laughs> like, dude, it's not you, bro. <laughs> like, relax. I haven't read about that my recent wolf. <laughs> I, I love that so much. Like he's he's like he literally is like a completely innocent person, but he's like it's really funny because like he's very dedicated to her. Like just because that's like her first fr- his first friend. But yeah, it's it's so it's really well done. Like the pace of it is breakneck. Like you're like the next episode will break into the next big arc. 
it'll be like four more episodes and then it's going to break into the last the the last arc of the thing uh, for the the season so i'm i'm appreciative of shows that and and manga that don't waste time like i feel like you sometimes get into a show and it's like the pacing gets killed because they're doing like unnecessary exposition like for an entire episode here it's like exposition during the episode and then we're right into the action again stuff like that I just feel like that's when you, you know, you don't have to bog it down. That's why I like Mashal so much. Like Mashal, like straight up was like, I'm punching everything. I don't like you. <laughs> like the vice principal when he was threatening him and stuff like that. <laughs> he fucking threatened to bury him and stuff like that. <laughs> I, I thought, fucking love that part. That shit was funny. I was like, damn. I, like that. I mean, that's that's what I can appreciate is like when it just, you know, the, the pace is very fast. Um, Jack, what do you think the story goes next? Like, give me, and you can be, and I want you to kind of like go out of left field here and be a little crazy with it. Like, don't think inside the box. Like, where do you think this goes? Outer space. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's, uh, that's we doing the, the honestly, I have right no there? fucking idea. Um, <laughs> Okaroon falls in love with Granny Seiko. Uh, and there's made, a love triangle. It would have made the right. It would have made the <laughs> yeah. weirdest. That would have been like the weirdest love triangle. <laughs> there's some anime out there that's probably done that already. Like this is. And then Turbo weird. Granny falls in love with Momo, <laughs> and it just gets real awkward. <laughs> she she no longer wants wieners. Do you not? No, she'll always want wieners. <laughs> wieners for life. They gotta find his ball, man. Yeah, oh my god, what is that one movie that he was like, ask me about my weed? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. You know what I'm uh, that's what it reminded okay. me of. That was Jonah Hill. That was a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, that was a long time ago. I always think about it was, that. Uh, ask me about my weed. College? Yeah, it was called uh, Tuition? Twi- something, dude. Where, where Jonah Hill's in the hot dog costume. Like, yeah. Ask yeah. Me yeah. About my yeah. Wiener. <laughs> yeah. I Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know where it's gonna go. Um with how absurd the show is, it it could go anywhere. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that um, one of the things is pretty. I mean, Ira, she's there, so she'll more than likely I'll, she'll play a part in the next arc because you can't like they're, they're she's gonna start, an alien. They're gonna start building up the game, yeah. so to speak. <laughs> that's basically she's how the Florian. That's how that's, well, is that what that, called? Yeah, yeah. From Serpo. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so my guess, my guess is he, he gains the ability to actually use his granny mode. Oh yeah. The turbo and, mode. And, and, yeah. I'm assuming he actually is able to like leverage that without having the granny inside of him or whatever. I don't know how to phrase that without being weird. That, but, that's how we, um, that's <laughs> we can, we can say that he can leverage it with turbo granny's aura inside of him. Instead yeah. of just saying turbo yeah. granny inside of him. <laughs> inside of him. Yeah, well, cause so her, her consciousness, her consciousness right. is in the cat now. So mm-hmm. it's like, I'm assuming he like adapts with that. Like, like he gets, he's able to utilize yeah, he, it without just being like a, a, a feral demon or whatever. Um, so, so I'm he'll assuming... get over the sickness that it causes, though. Oh, the depression. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> it, depression, and then his body, he starts. What is he gets like physically sick too? Yeah, because it's essentially <clears throat> like doing a lot of damage to his body. It's a lot of strain, essentially, to like transform like that. And then I'm assuming the aliens come back in because, like, after the first two alien encounters, it's mostly just the the, the ghost they side of things. Her banana. So. Give me your banana. I mean, you're you're legitimately like in the ballpark. Like that's how like the I would say like the rest of the season is going to play out. You're going to see a lot of like a lot of spiritual occult alien stuff like combined, and you're going to see like a uh, the I would say like the alien main, ghosts. Oh my god! I would say like the main characters. You're going to see them like build themselves up in terms of like ability and strength and stuff like that. It gets like I said. I'm I'm curious to see how they animate certain things. I, like because I want to. You know, I mentioned that before, like when I first saw like science as a studio, I didn't know anything about them. I knew mm-hmm. nothing. So I was like curious to see if like they had like other work that I've seen before. I don't think they have. And um, this is a huge undertaking for like, like you can't, this is one of those anime, like you can't fuck up because like a fan base would be like completely mm-hmm. rabid and on you. And I, I think they did a really good job so far. No, I agree for sure. Chibi, what do you want to see next? Have you read the manga what? now? No, I haven't. Um, I kind of agree with Brad. I, I see it going more towards of the the 
alien route now. Uh, but kind of also like Jack said, I have no idea because I feel like it's so out there. Like I can't even can't even make a guess. Yeah, shows that like usually run more to, bananas. Shows that are like really <laughs> absurd like this, they do like a lot of crazy shit, and it does go in like a like the the some of the things that like the way it connects the dots is like it's creative. It's also like how the fuck did you get from here to here? Mm -hmm. Like I don't you know usually. I'm looking for this guy's balls. You know what I mean? I was gonna say <laughs> I still think his balls are gonna go missing, man. That's arc number three. Like he's still that's not gonna that's the me. arc right now. He's looking for his balls, right? He no, has... that's what I'm saying. We're skipping arc number two. He's still <laughs> gonna lose them going into arc number three. The aliens have have it in a jar. Yeah, it's definitely. It's... I'm assuming he's had them the whole time. He just doesn't know it. It's just like in his pocket or something. <laughs> that would be awkward. <laughs> They uh, I would I will oh, say I shouldn't they, have looked at the character list. Yeah, don't do that. Um, they do up. do a oh, lot of okay. cool stuff in terms of the how like they work environments, like the school and like other places. It's like like I said, it's very creative. It feels like a, a modern day manga, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Where conversations you, you could see these conversations taking place between two people, that type of stuff. Like it, it's it's one of those things where it's like it's not, it's got the right amount of cringe with the way they see each other. Cause I really love the way Okarun and Momo talk to one another. And it feels like every time they get to a sweet spot, like one of them breaks it by being a dickhead, you know, mm -hmm. like, was it when they were, when, uh, what did I think Momo was making fun of him? Right. As I think it's the second episode. And like, he's like, bitch. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, after she got dressed. Yeah. yeah. And it was, it was funny because like, it was a, it was a, you know, he, she's, giving him a bit of shit, like calling him out on some of his faults. And I'm thinking like, oh, he's just going to like, he'll just take it and he'll be like, yeah, whatever. Right. But when he said, bitch, I started laughing. I was like, this is fucking <laughs> fantastic. He said, I've never had a friend before. <laughs> you ain't going to treat me like that. I love that. That was great. That's 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 one of the things I really like, though, is that like it, it the interactions go in, in ways that I was not expecting. Yeah, I, 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 I like the uh, when they went back to school and they they like went into their their classrooms and she's like I want to talk about aliens and he's like mm -hmm. I want to talk about ghosts and <laughs> and they're like they're like she she definitely got back with the his, yeah with, with, uh, the, her, <laughs> with the boyfriend. Her boyfriend with her boyfriend and I'm like nope yeah, the exact opposite guy. actually everyone everyone's misunderstanding yeah would you say she be fuck that guy I said fuck that guy that shit made me mad I mean first you know, episode it's a it's mm -hmm. a good way to establish like a, that yeah you know, Momo had a type and. Her type was probably wrong the entire time. The discrepancy is crazy. Oh, dude, it's it's fucking hilarious. Because, like, Okarun is just the most innocent, naive person. But he does have an attitude, which I think is great. I, he's sassy boy. And then Momo is, you know, she's a Gyaru. And she just wants yeah, to... Yeah, I get it. But she's very sweet. I think Ken Takakura is like a wrestler Gyaru is the first time I've heard that term. Never heard really? that before? No, isn't that that guy in Naruto, the sand guy? I... That's Gyara. Gyara. Oh, Gyara. Oh, oh. I mean, you're I'm close. Bad. You're close. But yeah, Gyaru is. Um, it's really <laughs> the guy. first time I saw them in Japan. I was in Shinjuku, and I was like, "Oh, that's what that is." Like they pretty much just like heavy makeup. H heavy makeup. Sometimes a lot of like they're they're a lot more tan, and then they'll have like that's like you saw her friend like she was really tan, and then like really bright makeup. I, I think of it like. The equivalent of like, in, like a popular like it girls like yeah. sassy like it's kind of like that. They're very trendy like. Gotcha. But emo. Kind of like that. Yeah, you got to remind yourself, Jack, that in Japan, most of the time you it is frowned upon to stand out. It's yeah. very do the opposite, very yeah. much yeah very much like an organized society. So when you see like it's because I've always found it funny when they have these anime with like teenagers and stuff and the. You know, the kids have like blonde hair, but I'm like, no, nah, that's true. Like you might get one person and they're probably like, you know, the the bad egg is what they call the them. delinquent. Yeah, the so delinquent. Is, black sheep. So is Gyaru only referring to women or can... it's, ge it's generally women. Like mm -hmm. Yeah, I think with like uh what it's like punk culture if you're like a gotcha. male, yeah. Like basically how the uh her ex boyfriend stood out and stuff like that. That was basically They call them like Yankees, right? Yeah. Yeah. Very weird. It's very yeah, yeah. Be, being in baseball, being, yeah. Being in Japan and seeing that and being around that a lot was like I was like I don't know what's going on with you guys. 
You guys, right. all, you guys all have uniforms and stuff like that. Like most of them are, you know, essentially dressed like Okarun. And then you have those that like unbutton their shirts and stuff like that, dye their hair, have mm-hmm. like the the weird cell phone stuff on it. Yeah, it's it's just weird because like having gone to like one of the schools, like we we were there for like a week, and just kind of like integrating with them and like noticing like just how you know uniform they are. And then you have, mm-hmm. like, that one person who stands out, and it's like, that's not how the states are. Like, there's usually, like, a couple yeah. of people who are class clowns or, you know, dipshits or whatever. A lot more, yeah, than just, like, one. Yeah. Yeah. Off but, topic. Yeah. The main voice actor is Tanjiro's voice actor, right? In the, in the sub? Oh, in the sub? I think so, yeah. 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 Every time he'd start yelling, all I saw was, like, Tanjiro yelling. I think Weird so. Weird point. Okay. No, I mean that's on topic, right? I I I did watch the sub. I did like watch it through, like sub, but I was like, dude, the dub is just so much more. Satisfying. I'll have to rewatch it the now, like fully. It's just the way. I mean, I think the um, I think Turbo Granny is Naruto, right? That's Naruto's oh, voice shit. actor, I think. Oh really? Um, yeah, in Japanese. I was like, oh, that's Naruto's, like you know. That's- shit. I don't even think that I explains a lot. Actually, this is a hu- this is a huge production. They get, they got like a bunch of heavy hitters Damn. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, very surprising. Uh, Jack, you have a favorite character? Hmm. Better be Turbo Granny. <laughs> no, she likes too many dongs. You can suckle those teats though. <laughs> um. <laughs> I, I I like Okarun. Really? You know, he's 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 the he's the shy guy, kind of the one that is like a loner. Do you like his uh his emo moments when he's in that form mm-hmm. and stuff like that? Yeah, man. I'm depressed. <laughs> <laughs> that shit has to be so dead. I'm depressed. Man. She's like, You're making me mad. Stop it. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. Calls her babe. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, babe, I can't turn. It's like, you're too heavy. He's like, he's like, he's, yeah, he's, he's like bad. It's like bad news, babe. We're not gonna make that turn. You're too heavy. I mean, she's like, what the? Like, First off, don't call me, babe. <laughs> I'm like, stay on topic here, Christ. I love. No, nah, he looks really Christ. cool when he's in that form. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it, the um, like I said, I I really like the way the the hand drawn animation when it transitions for a character when they transform and stuff. It's fucking amazing. It's very well done. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm like a traditionalist with that stuff. Like I like CG, that's great. But if you can do it hand drawn, like when um, I think it was was it episode two when they beat that alien right, and then like they're outside yeah. the the barrier, and then she collapses. Oh, that's and then episode his two, hand yeah. like fucking transitions. And oh then, yeah, and the glasses hit the floor, and then like the, oh, it yeah. magnifies. I'm like, that's good detail. That's fantastic. I thought that was really cool. Chibi, who's your uh, who's your favorite character? It's hard. I feel like I feel like I just I like Momo. That's my girl. Sassy. A sassy girl. I like my sassy girl. Also, I like that her outfit is like the same as Yukari's, basically. Oh yeah. It's persona. like pretty close. Now I'm like, I can cosplay her and Yukari. Like it's a two for one. But no, I, I really like Momo's personality. I, I like seeing the growth too and just in the short amount of episodes that we've had. Um, I don't know. I like her a lot. And I like Okarun too. Fucking uh, literally all of them. <laughs> Fucking banana bitch. Can't choose one. Brad, what I about you? With Momo. Um, mine, mine's probably Momo at the moment. Uh, if, if Turbo Granny gets more, more mm. spotlight, I'm pretty sure she'll take the cake. Yeah. But like right now she's just been a, a mystery. <laughs> now that now that she's a cat, definitely a few brownie points there. But I just haven't seen I just haven't seen enough of her yet. True, uh, true. But I, I think Momo is my favorite character just because, like, she starts off strong, but she's getting mm-hmm. stronger. Yeah. Um, Okarun, I just he he starts off weak, but like really nice. And he's <laughs> not really done it. Like like he's just been noble the entire time, but there's not been a lot of growth. It's time Wait, to shine is you- coming. What are you talking about when like they were fighting the aliens in the UFO and she he like gave up immediately? 
Yeah, so was, uh, 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 that that's, was, what, that's what I'm saying. That part, he's not like, going to be able to do this. That part was he's so like, fucking good. It's like, Miss Mom, I'm coming to save you. And he's like, well, never mind. I don't think I can do this. Like, you gave up really fast. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, that like, like, like he's, he's super innocent, but like he hasn't really, I don't think he's really grown at all. Like, I think he's just yeah weak weak and and noble but like that's it <laughs> like he's i don't think he's really done anything life. he's just kind of survived because of because <laughs> hey, of momo sometimes you, gotta, sometimes you gotta i know poor momo the whole first couple episodes just fucking trying to allow yeah anything happens she go oh i'm so sorry like that's yeah. actually okay i'll what? say that's probably one of my favorite parts is anytime he starts to transform she just throws him into a wall yeah and that just seems to fix it lights him yeah. up lets him get I, burned, I think burned by the barrier I think there's a lot of character growth for Okarun, though. It's it's he's he doesn't have a lot to be confident about, so it makes sense for him to give up a fight immediately when he first gets his power. I don't think that. So I, I think I think throughout the show, though, we'll eventually see him grow and, and gain confidence. Get his balls back. Get his balls. Back. <laughs> it's because he don't have any balls. <laughs> <laughs> Every, my man cook. <laughs> everything was missing first, and now he's just gotta get it back. He's got the shaft back. He's gotta get the balls. <laughs> <laughs> I love Seiko. I don't care. <laughs> That's true. Easily my favorite character, bro. I don't care. All right, somebody, somebody, get him some water. Dude, I mean, like she's <laughs> she's like a really smart character. She's like mm -hmm. knowledgeable. She's also no nonsense with them too. Like in terms of like what she wants them to do. Like she's like very like look, you guys are gonna die if you don't fucking pick mm -hmm. up this training. I like the fact that. She's like, so he's like very, I would say like impractical when he's like, I have to use the bathroom. He's like, well, go ahead, do it. <laughs> She's way too casual about like all these moments and stuff like that. You know, you got mm -hmm. your, you got your, uh, <laughs> you sure you're a guy? You got your thing back? Let me see it. <laughs> Show me that pecker. <laughs> Let me see it. Let me see it. Pull it out. She, ask me about my wiener. She got a bat, you know, she meets people with bats and stuff, but I thought was, yeah. a, it's kind of a weird I thing. that. <laughs> I was like, why is she? Nah, that, that, that's true. With a big pencil. That's a good weapon. On the on on the wiki, her combat style is bat mastery. Bat mastery. <laughs> Dude, you will I'm telling you, if you if you guys have the chance, if you guys don't read the manga, or if you guys are very curious about reading manga, I think Dan to Dan is like one of those where you're gonna be. I think really I'm gonna impressed. eventually yeah they did like I've heard I, such I, I wouldn't say it's like panel for panel, like it's as mm -hmm. similar, but they do a good job of, you know transitioning certain moments i think the the part on top of the train where they blow up the turbo granny like the, the huge explosion mm -hmm. it actually looks cooler somewhat in the manga like the best way i can describe mm -hmm. it's like it feels like the way he draws things like it it would the detail in it makes it feel like it's going to animate somehow i don't know how that's mm -hmm. the best way to talk about it that's no, what, flip it really fast you know what i mean like and that's how it kind of feels <laughs> that's how i feel about like sakamoto days too when that comes out if you think the action here is fucking crazy that show i know i want to watch sakamoto days when does that come out next january i think okay cool a lot of really cool shit in that Heard too. Good things, yeah. it's essentially like superhero assassins and they're fucking yeah if you ever watched the movie wanted right that's basically what it is oh okay huh. yeah but it, you know people and the you know it's a society being like yeah that guy's dead okay let's move on that's, <laughs> that's how it works so, damn, we have 40 minutes. Damn, almost. <laughs> We've gone through all five episodes, right? I don't think there's anything else to talk about with the show. Unless you guys I think overall just solid. Yeah, I mean, I mean, probably one of the best new anime of the season. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, shocked by the quality. I was kind of, I was, mm -hmm. I was like, please don't be like Hell's Paradise where Mappa took that no. over and just fucking mess that up which makes me so sad i feel like that also has so much potential like i still liked it but yeah from people who read the manga it definitely was a letdown of what it could have been you're i mean you're not always going to be happy with the one for one but like mm -hmm. the way mappa has like uh animated jjk is mm -hmm. like fucking far beyond better than the art mm -hmm. in jjk you know what i mean for i'm like sure what the, oh I'm my like, god what the fuck, yeah dude JK looks like a fucking no offense, but actually a full offense to Gage. That shit look like you just his his line art's not great. And it wasn't great like near the end. It got better, mm -hmm. I think, but mm -hmm. like it felt like he took a step back when he started to kind of push out weekly mm -hmm. releases. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Dan to Dan's like fantastic. If you're like uh Jack, you've you've uh, watched a One Punch Man, right? I've watched an episode. Yeah, so if you look up well Brad, I know Brad's watched One Punch Man. I don't know. The art, I've watched the first season. like I think, like if I were to do like tier lists of like art and stuff like that, it would be like 
One Punch Man, like it has some of the best art I've ever seen in the manga. There's mm-hmm. a there's a point in the in the manga where um Saitama flips like he's literally on Jupiter and he calls it the table flip where he grabs under the crust on the moon or whatever on Titan and flips the fucking crust over to the point where like it like completely shows the interior of the moon or whatever. I was like, I don't know how the fuck you did that. That's the most amazing <laughs> panel I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> so for manga is is all the art black and white? Can be. Yeah. Uh traditionally, yes, you, you do have color panels, but like they you know, I think it's a, a lot of that's because like the timetable. Like you have like mm-hmm. a week to get that out. And generally like mm-hmm. once you get it published, you have to go to your editors. There's um god damn it, what is it? Um I think his name's like Paulo from Tokyo. He's like this Filipino guy who lives in Tokyo. Does like a lot of like because he lives over there. He did like a thing with uh, mangaka, so the manga artist, and like he was showcasing like just how stressful it is for them because they have like their editors mm-hmm. who do like the backgrounds and the paneling. They do the main art, and then like they have to push it to their publisher, and they meet with their mm-hmm. publisher. And the publisher's like, "Yeah, we like this. We can do that." They have to meet such mm-hmm. crucial commitments because they have like I think it's like Saturday and Sunday is when it has to come out. Yeah, and they're contractually obligated to get it out mm-hmm. on that day. Mm. It is insane. No, there's like. Dude. There's like manga about being a manga artist and like how stressful and like you just like don't get sleep. It's like insane. That's why like they go on hiatuses and they're like, all right, this season's done. I'm done for like five months. They to work recover. Yeah, they work like 12, 12 to 14 hours, yeah. like six days a week. They're burnt out usually. Mm-hmm. And when I think in the episode he was talking about like when I'm not like if I wasn't doing this right now, like if I'm like on a week on a day off i'm thinking about what it's going to look like when i get back mm-hmm. to work i'm like yeah. so when you guys are reading this manga are you buying the manga and then i just go on reddit you, yeah. donating <laughs> it oh yeah, yeah you, they, they, you can really like read it chapter by chapter online yeah, don't like, don't you worry don't you worry jack like you don't have to um buy it and stuff yeah like, you know the mangas are usually no, paneled like, <laughs> yeah and like i hate to say it i mean there's like third-party websites that you can read it on like mm-hmm. sometimes not the best quality but like people will translate it for you and and stuff like that but i mean you can later on go and buy it like people collect certain like manga volumes and series but usually people just read it like week week at a time when it comes out gotcha. or like depending on which one you watch sometimes or read sometimes like ones i like will come out once a month like it's crazy so yeah, villain sa- villain sagas once a month mm-hmm. i wonder been, that's been going on for like the, 10 years yeah i wonder if the uh reading app i have uh i use uh an app called i think it's called chubby um or chunky I chubby say, or chunky. i was like well buddy all right <laughs> and it's just where i read all my comics uh on mm-hmm. so i'm wondering if i can read manga on it probably i mean like it, you just have to like search the platform but um, mm-hmm. yeah, usually manga could do like m- weekly releases, if it, especially if it's Shonen Jump mm-hmm. is a weekly release. Like they have almost no choice. I think yeah. like Berserk, I was going to mention them like the, if you ever watch, if you ever seen their art too in Berserk, it is, I don't know how he did it monthly. It was like 30, 35 to 40 pages a chapter Shit. and some of the best art I've ever seen. I was like, dude, how the fuck mm-hmm. are you guys so detailed? Like with the art, <laughs> like there's another uh, manga called, I think it's Vagabond. Um, I feel like I've heard of that one. I think that's going to get animated eventually, or maybe it has, but it's it's a great um, great read. And like they mm. have like a, a scene where it showcases someone's eye. It's very up close. And I was like, that's too detailed, bro. Like, you got to, you spent an entire panel looking at someone's eye. They're dead, though. So, you know, I guess that can make sense. <laughs> but, Brad, did you, um, you, you've, uh, have you looked at any of the panel art for um, One Punch Man at all? No. No, sometimes I go to Books a Million and go to the mm. the manga section, and I only go to the Dragon Ball, the Dragon Ball, the Bruh. original Dragon Ball Toriyama baby, and just, and just flip through panels and go. I know that guy. <laughs> that guy's bald. Like a <laughs> day's work, he just like bald. he just goes away. Day's work, boys. That there's Goku or Gaku, <laughs> whatever his name is. <laughs> his name is Gaku. He's a hero. But yeah, if you, I recommend them um, if you want. Like Dan Dan would be a really good read. Um, okay. Jack, it's very. Just to let you know, it's like it, it's like off the wall type shit, but it's very much a comic book. Um, yeah. Sakamoto Day is the same way too. So it's interesting because like a lot of people were concerned about what was going to happen with you know JJK eventually wrapping up. I know that Kaiju number eight is it eight or number nine? I'm sorry, number eight. Yeah, number eight. Number eight. Yeah, people are excited about the Kaiju number eight. 
stuff yeah. like that. <laughs> so what, excited. I mean, it, like like I said, it's a it's been a good season, good year mm-hmm. for anime. And then there's Orb, which I keep talking about because I fucking love I that need to watch that thing. one. Yeah, heliocentrism. Uh, solo leveling. The movie comes out next month. Let's wait. There's a movie. I, mean, I think it's a recap with like the first two episodes of the oh. next season. I oh. also watch. I don't it. know if I'm a fan of that. I know Jack. Didn't you I like, like that. who watched who watched Demon Slayer? The, the I did. You did. What did so I they, went to the movies? And was watch it, the, it was it the first two episodes or is it like how so it the second movie? Yeah, it was the last two episodes of the previous season and the first episode of the new season. So stupid. So it was literally that. Like it was nothing. I don't really new. Sounds fantastic. I don't like that. I don't I, it's, 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 I mean, it's a good way to get s- some money. You know, it's a good cash grab. Yeah, you know, they got my money. money grab. Well, I mean, if you like people love Demon Slayer, right? There are there. There are detractors who are like, it's just too simplistic. But I don't give a shit about that because every anime that gets complex generally like gets confused yeah. you know, somewhere along the line and then fucks itself over. Right. What? I'm not going to lie. The Hashira's uh, arc, uh, the training arc. It's kind of boring me, so I haven't finished it yet. It's a it's a bit fillery. It's actually longer. Mm-hmm. Like I and mean Chibi notes. It's actually longer mm-hmm. in the anime. Yeah. I didn't think it was going to be eight episodes. I thought it was going to really be. Yeah. I thought. It was yeah, be there's four. literally nothing happening. I thought it was going to be four episodes, and then we're going to bounce straight into the Infinity Castle, which is crazy. And I was right. I told Chibi about this last year, or like mm-hmm. I was like, well, I gonna, agreed with you. Yeah, it's going to be. They're going to make break it into movies. Which is the yeah. smart, which is the smart thing to do, yeah. honestly. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like doesn't it go pretty fast, Ken? Yes, very. Yeah, so this is a way for them to they, elongate it. They like, start low key. It was like uh, they start fucking. They start fucking people up. Like let's just say shit gets serious real quick. Yeah. Like good. when I was reading that, I remember being like, Yeah. If huh? you <laughs> if you thought like the the act like if you like the action and you're like it's a little bit, uh, I would say like it's a little bit too long sometimes. You're like, oh, we want it takes too long Buckle to get in. from one action scene to another. No, that's not how the infinite just arc. wait. <laughs> this, just wait. This is essentially like you. this is the final arc. So they're like, yeah, yeah, we're gonna fucking just start throwing the most monstrous shit at you. Dude, so good. I'm so ready for people to get pissed off. I am so ready. <laughs> well, that was JJK. You know, people were Man, ready. fuck that shit. Exactly. Me quitting at the same place I read it. <laughs> what well, I mean, it's interesting too, because I, I I saw like the way people talk about Jujutsu Kaisen, the the second season in Shibuya, it's like that is their best arc. I shit you not, and I'm probably like the one of the few people who think this. Once I got past Shibuya and I was reading on, I was like, man, it falls. It does not go in the way I think it does, and it's not cohesive at times. It feels like we're just a lot of people have said that. Honestly, but it's, it's a lot of cool shit though. Like, don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. Like, I really like the action. It's just one of those things where I was like, I kind of expected this to be more like Shibuya. Like, it was gonna build characters back up, mm-hmm. and we're gonna. It's like not. Nah, it's it's kind of like a tournament arc, which is kind of weird. Mm-hmm. I haven't heard Brad say anything. Brad, what other anime? Yeah, are you anime. Watching, buddy? Uh, Dan to Dan. Dan <laughs> That's his it. new favorite. Uh, I don't think I've actually watched anything recently. Just anything we make him watch. While he's thinking, off topic, Super Vive has their open beta on the 20th. Damn. Um, damn. I don't even know what no, that is. But I've, been playing Metaf- I've been playing Metaphor too much, so I don't really, I haven't really Metaphor! watched Metaphor! I've been playing, I've been playing Dragon Age. Brad knows, the, Brad knows the best part of Metaphor is the music when that guy starts chanting and stuff like that, and then it crescendos and shit. That is the best thing <laughs> ever, bro. Oh my god. I will literally, I don't like, I in any Persona game, I don't like watch the credits or whatever, but if I'm at that part, Brad, where like it starts to build up, I will watch the credits like to be getting leveled <laughs> up so I can just hear that part in the song. I'm like, yeah, let's go kill something. <laughs> yeah. It's good, man. Like Me and Brad are going to do a video on it. Chibi don't watch it because it's going to be a spoiler review. Because it's been okay. out for a month. <laughs> I know. I just been broke. But then I ended up buying the Dragon Age. Belgard, <laughs> what do you should have just su- subscribed so, to the EA for I sixteen dollars? Chibi, I told you that it was essentially Dragon Age two, but a pol- more polished version. What do you think so far, of Dragon Age: The Belgard? Now that we have like some time to damn, go. Brad, you don't like it? I I do. I enjoy it, but I. 
disagree with it being anything like any of the other dragon dragon ages but anyways good go ahead i have pros and cons i'm not super far Mm. i'm really impressed with the graphics like i i was i was playing like the prologue scene and michael was watching it and i was like freaking out like i wish i did a reaction video i was just like having just a meltdown i was like this is so like i don't know i just didn't expect it to be good the environmental Um, stuff is fantastic I, yeah. I'm just I'm not a big fan of some of the facial stuff because it feels fair. stiff still. No, you know? that's fair. I, I guess more so I was yeah, that's kind of what I meant too, is like the environment. Like I, I think like a lot of the background, a lot of that interaction is really good. Um I have a little bit of qualms about the fighting style. Um like I, I don't know, just comparing it to the other ones, I feel like the cooldown on the uh, on the abilities is kind of shit. Yeah, but cool, maybe I just have cool, no. The cooldown, the team up stuff is very long. It it does okay, take a while. Yeah. yeah, and I was just like, okay, like this kind of stupid, but whatever. Um, I am hoping it deviates a little bit more from just it feels very linear right now. Um, so I'm hoping it opens up. No, it stays linear. Like the the environments and stuff like that um there's you do get to go to like a wait, not, like i see the map like not, not like a hub world but it's kind of like yeah a, um, where you're going into it's the, kind of similar to sorry to cut you off, like it, inquisition right where you have yeah. like that map yeah it's I very mean, that's, it, it's very uh, god of war like yeah. the, the most modern that, god of yeah war. that was so kind of my view on the on this dragon age versus the rest of the dragon age series i'm gonna mm. bring it back to final fantasy Mm-hmm. Um, they're like all of the Final Fantasies up to fifteen or like, before fifteen, or but I guess before fourteen, they all had kind of a similar f- formula, turn based, mm-hmm. you know, very, very grindy, very st- strategic. Fifteen, sixteen took a completely different route. Sixteen, especially, it's very action oriented. Perry, it's Devil May Cry, and, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's 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 Perry and combo. Um, Dra- Dragon Age two or Inquisition, right? It, I feel like it's much more party composition have the you know crafting all the best gear um you know you have items and you know you're fighting and there's uh not not it's not turn-based but there's like stop like stop time stop. Where you can, yeah, yeah yeah i know what you mean there's there's like command like you can mm-hmm. like issue commands to people mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um this one is it's much more like 16 the 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 party members just kind of do whatever the heck they want you can mm-hmm. you can kind of give them direction but it's like there is the, and then the equipment is very simplified it's just it is very much loot boxy it, it's just yeah. if the arrow goes up you equip it if it goes down you sell it mm-hmm. i mean there's why not a, i don't feel like there's a whole lot of why use numbers like let me just yeah. use mm-hmm. arrows is it good and then, and then i played i played probably an hour and a half and i was like this is like literally just gears of war you you run down a hallway you find a little puzzle to open a door you fight waves of enemies. You go to the next area. You fight the boss. You get the loot. You go I, back to the home world. And that mm-hmm. was, I was like, I was like, it's not, it's not a bad formula. That it's is. just not Drag Age, Dragon Age to me. Well, personally. I mean, that's kind of the mission structure they had before, but because it was turn-based, it was a little slower, but that was the, mm-hmm. that was the beef about um, Dragon Age 2 for a lot of people is that you went from turn-based and Dragon Age Origins and Awakening to like something completely action oriented. And I don't think you had party control or maybe you kind of did. But it's I like it, it literally is a polished version of Dragon Age Two. Um, my only problem with the game is that because I'm like I'm like ten hours in, is that I am okay. I have like every Bioware game I have played has been progressive in terms of the way it, mm-hmm. its characters are set up and story, but it's always subtle. There's always nuance to it. This is the most preachy fucking game I've ever played. <laughs> I am I am like shocked that it like Bioware did that because if you look at the way Inquisition worked. Every time they talked about representation, it was always very subtle. It was in the moment. It was like part of a storyline. Same thing with like the Mass Effect series. Like when you deal with like certain characters and like their orientations and stuff like that, it's very, it's very quick to the point. It doesn't like get in the way. We don't have to have like an entire fucking conversation about it, about Mm. why it's important. This game does, it does it in your face and it actually gives you like those like dialogue tree things where it's like, you did this. And I was like, I was like, you don't have to do that, man. Like Bioware, like we, I, I've played enough of your games. I've been a fan of all of your work. With the exception of like DA two, which I'm, I'm I'm okay on, but like your Man, it, I love DA two. But like, but that's what I'm saying. Like, it doesn't. Mm-hmm. You don't have to preach. Like, yeah. I don't. But but it is a as like as cliche as it is. It is a return to form for Bioware because I feel like 
you know, it's, it's, it's good. And I like a lot of things about it. I just feel like it's too preachy. And then like, in terms of the, how linear it is, it's mm-hmm. really noticeable because it is an action game. And you're right mm-hmm. about that, Brad. Like if it was not action, I think you could get over it because there'd be mm-hmm. strategy to a- approach combat. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's, um, you know, I, I think I like the, the, the way the classes work, that type of stuff. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. Also, the hair is fucking crazy. The physics, dude, it's insane. The jiggle physics. I was telling Brad, I was like, I was like, dude, I, I like my character has like a bob, so she's like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm literally, like, just I, the hair. I will, I will turn my character quickly just so their hair whips back and forth. No, that <laughs> has. It's so I, fun. Like in the middle of combat, I'm like distracted. It's, it's the funniest shit because it actually looks natural. Right? Yeah, it does. Um, really good game though, but like mm-hmm. I, I really feel like you know. It's it's not I wouldn't say it's like a divisive Dragon Age, but I could totally see people like yeah purist like because Brad's a purist when it comes to Fall Fantasy, but he's open minded. Mm-hmm. But I can see people who were like, I wanted Inquisition. I I so, I like it. I like it, but I could see yeah. why people wouldn't. Mm. I've played about four hours. Does the story actually expand, or is it just yes? Hey, we need to find okay. Yeah, because no, because all, the first four hours, I'm like, there's no. That's what I was thinking too. Not, mm-hmm. not only is the game been linear, but it was just like soulless. I, I guess that, that's I guess, it. The, like, I guess that's the best the way, I guess the best <laughs> yeah. way I can say, it. No, that's fair. and that also pissed me off by the way, that Solus is not a bigger part of the story. I don't give a fuck. Like I, I'll spoil that for people. When, so when you get to talk to Solus, I'm like, why aren't you more important? Yeah. Like, why are why, you just stuck in the, fade? yeah. Why am I just talking to you in the fade? God damn it. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, there are, there are important moments in the story. It does branch off. It, it basically mm-hmm. it's the Avengers yeah that's fair <laughs> it is it is yeah, a very good in terms of the way you look at like bioware games because of how they fucked up anthem because a lot of people were kind of you know turned away from mass effect and drama even though it's not a bad game this is a really safe bioware game like they really try to like appease fans of like the old games while introducing certain quality of life stuff like they it really feels like they're not they didn't like the story i think is like really straightforward character interactions are fun but you're going to start to notice when you talk to them like you want to say something like violent and sarcastic you want to talk shit and what comes out is like something that feels very um like safe like they're not they're not trying to anger anybody like you're not truly really trying to upset people i think that's kind of sad because like with mass effect you could punch people (laughs) jack Jack, have you ever played mass effect you ever heard of those games Mm mm-hmm yeah, like you remember when you you can punch the, the punch the up, reporter punch the reporter. <laughs> here's a here's a news story for you. <laughs> Clocks her Damn. in the face and shit. And that's you on the herder. Oh yeah, yeah. No, dude, she she's a terrible person. She would like <laughs> you would do something heroic. You would save people, and she would try to flip it on you like you were a bad person. And so like you could either just like you know be calm and civil and like talk to her, or you can be like, here's a story for you. Just clocks her in the face. Well, so I. I, re- I really liked the those moments in that game because it was it was usually a bu- a button prompt. Mm-hmm. You could either do like a renegade or the the paragon like action. And I don't remember what world I was on, but I was like talking to someone, and then there was someone behind them, right? And it was like j- I don't even remember what the prompt was, but it was just like the the renegade option appeared, so I hit it, and he just pulls out his gun and shoots him. And I was like, well, okay <laughs> then, alrighty, well that was exactly what I needed to happen. A whole lot of gang shit. <laughs> um i i do i do appreciate the dialogue in, in dragon age though the, the the sarcastic dialogue i think has been been fairly um it's yeah that's satisfying mm-hmm. i'll yeah. say that overall i think it's well done but like i said it's it, you'll 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 notice it as you go along it's like it feels really safe and that's fine I, because you know buy it where it really, needs it yeah <laughs> i i do i do think it is very polished and pretty however i do not like the character models they they look like action they look like figurines they look mm. like like uh like tabletop they're it they're, just they're way too smooth and like round and like i i don't i i don't i don't disagree with you i don't like the pixarish look yeah yeah know? okay yeah that, that's oh yeah. that's a good that's a great yeah, yeah. You, you it's go. just going from inquisition to that like I'm not going to say it's a downgrade, but I don't feel like it's, I feel like it's a very parallel move in the sense that like, when you start to see the dudes with the horns, I can't remember their fucking name. Um, Um, the Kunari. 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 Yeah. You're going to feel differently. That that's part of the one thing I was like, the Kunari are like really rough looking for a reason. And then you see the Kunari there. I'm like, why do you have like an angelic face? You're supposed to be like, (laughs) you guys are supposed to look like, you know, half demons and shit. 
I don't like the way the Darkspawn look. They look very much like something out of a uh, Fortnite Save Fortnite. the World. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fortnite Save the World. Yeah. That's all I could think about, dude. I was like, God damn, did they just take, they just ripped us from Fortnite Save the World? <laughs> they used to look so much more scarier in, in DA2. Well, that's, that's what I'm well, like, you know, there's nothing wrong with um updating like your art style. That's completely mm-hmm. fine. But I think like deviating too much. Mm-hmm. can be distracting considering that the entire series had an aesthetic going for it yeah that's true. like i've been they've already admitted that they're not going to do that for mass effect 4 like it's legitimately going to be mass effect did y'all um, get the uh did y'all get the deluxe edition or the, the upgraded editions no. okay so I, I i well so i just subscribed to the ea thing so i can mm-hmm. play the game right and it comes with all the collectible mm-hmm. items all the costumes mm-hmm like all of the costumes, like the real flamboyant gold, like super royal looking mm-hmm. uh, armor, or there's like a cloak with the the like blood dragon logo from Ooh, from uh-huh. Origins, like across the chest. And I tried to wear that in one cutscene. I'm like, this doesn't fit at all. Like me wearing oh. this giant wearing this cloak with like blood splattered. I was like, this doesn't it, fit at all. Yeah, no, no, no it's a, it was part of the pre-order chibi. If you actually, okay. when you bought the game, mm-hmm. yeah, I no, it's ugly. I hate it. I, I was like, it. it looks it so doesn't... awkward because I'm, I'm, ro- I'm, a, I'm a rogue in the game. And I'm Same, like, let's go. I'm like, why am I? Why do I look like I'm wearing a fucking hoodie with a blood stain on it? <laughs> like, that's how it looks. It's just it's, angsty. It's killing me. Well, I was like, I was like, I was like, oh, this looks kind of cool. And then I, I, I you put I wore I wore it in one cutscene. I'm like, nope, going back to the wardrobe <laughs> immediately. Let me You're just, like, absolutely not. Let me just wear normal clothes for a bit. All right, I just want to ask you about how DA Vanguard was going. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't and know. Vanguard, Veilguard, the Veilguard. Sorry, I knew what you meant. Okay. <laughs> so, what's the, what's the, what? Who's who's suggesting next? Is it Jack? No, I, I, can, I can do me. it again. I no, Brad. <laughs> Because I, I suggested one, and then Brad went. Oh, okay. So it's Chibi. Then I'll be... Oh, yeah, because we, we, we ignored my last suggestion. Oh, yeah. I don't remember. What it was. Oh, oh, yeah. Twilight Which, of the Gods. Because I... <laughs> <laughs> rough synopsis, it's a fucking... Uh, it's a... Uh, what's his name, dude? Who's the director? Uh, he, Zack Snyder. Yeah, it's a Zack Snyder fucking production. Schneider. You can tell who it is the entire time. Like, there's just... Uh, there's, there's either... Uh, dong, because we've talked about dong a lot today, or or murders, and that's that's they, it. They had to have a dong budget in that show. Like, <laughs> it's got to be shown once per episode. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we'll have Chibi decide next on what she wants to watch. We can just message us the thing, and then um, we'll finally do Mortal Kombat, right? For fucking uh, yeah, the movies. So yeah, what about what about Borderlands? You know what? Oh shit! That can that you know what? Well, instead of the podcast, we will do it as a video. We'll do the Borderlands watch party. Oh god! Yeah, you. great. Okay, so that did that'd... you? Uh, did you watch the? Uh, uh, um, nope. The link that I sent. Uh, oh, I I watched like thirty seconds of it. Okay. Yeah, this is gonna be great. I want honest, better be. I want honest opinions. I bought the movie. Yeah, I know. I want. I want honest. <laughs> I have it opinions. forever now. I want honest. I, I want honest opinions on that movie too. No one. No lies. <laughs> I. My feeling is like Jack's the one who's gonna like it. He's like, I thought it was fun. <laughs> it's okay, we're gonna we're gonna do know. the same. We're gonna do the I, same like thing with Minecraft. So, and I already from the get go, Borderlands was miscasted. Yeah, it's. It's gonna. We be need rough. Chris here for this. It's gonna be rough. No, we don't. <laughs> he'll just be sad with his beard no fucking he'll, uh, he'll hit his vape a couple times all right <laughs> so yeah. covered dan to dan talked about dragon age bill garden um i got nothing else anybody got anything nope. all right cool thanks so. Al. don't well, forget 24 to, hour uh, went well yeah 24 hour went well right yep i saw a little bit of it then i was like back to <laughs> you know dad duty um she didn't win anything yeah Chibi, do you have anything going on? Like 24 hours now? I'm going to do mine Saturday. Saturday? Okay. Mm-hmm. Brad, I don't, you know, you're never going to stream again. So, oh. let's, uh, because uh, it's Brad's episode. Brad, take it away. That's the clip right there in his face. Y'all have a good one. Yeah, there you go. That's it. That's it. That's all you get. That's all you get. Bye, everybody.